Well, welcome, busy people. How did I know that? Oh, oh, that's right. I'm Amy Robinson, and I'm a business leadership coach. Um, I'm a national coach who's headquartered here in Houston. Yeah. Um, just got back from the East Coast where it was 55 degrees this weekend, and I wore a turtleneck maybe the first time in 13 months. Pretty exciting, but I'm glad to be back. So right off the bat, I don't assume anything. And I don't assume that everybody knows what it is that I do as a leadership coach or as a business leadership coach. So if you will allow me a moment, I'd be happy to, uh, to explain. And by way of introduction, I'm going to analogize it to, uh, to a sports coach. So how many of you have ever played a sport? Wow. What sport did you play? A lot. Everything, everything that started with an S? Yeah. Good. Ed, what did you do? Uh, Swimming. Excellent. Anybody else have something different that hasn't been mentioned? Volleyball. Wow. Excellent. I always like to ask. That has nothing to do with this, by the way. But I'm going to, uh, well, I'll tell you what. Even if you haven't played a sport, and it seems like most of you have, you have a pretty basic idea as to what a coach does for her individual athletes as well as the team, right? It's the coach's role and responsibility to help her athletes and team reach into their higher potential, right? Achieve their goals, succeed, and win. And that's what I do for my clients. Now, my clients aren't athletes per se, but they are leaders. And they're leaders in three domains. The first is that they're high-performing individuals. The second is that they're leaders in the company setting. And the third, business owners and entrepreneurs. So those three leaders I work with. So as a coach, you're not going to uh, find the following hard to believe, but I like to diagram. So I'm going to diagram. And I hope I don't trigger too many of you. Let me explain. My clients come to me in a certain state, OK? And we're going to call that point A. Now, this point A is their current reality. When you go to the mall for the first time, or the 78th time, as it happens in the Galleria for me, you go and find the marquee with the red X that says, you are here, right, to get your orientation. So my clients come to me with a current circumstance, again, their reality. And what they want to do when we're coaching together is to move forward to what I call point B. Keep it real simple, point B. And point B is where their nirvana or all their goals are. So, I know it's early, well, it's not that early, but it's kind of early in the morning. It's still morning. What do you notice about that diagram? What strikes you? It's simple. Is there a lot of white space in a certain area? In between, yeah. This. Well, this is where I go do my magic. All in here. And I call this affectionately, this white space, the gap of your performance. And it's my job as coach to help you maneuver and navigate through this gap so you can move from where you are today in your time management to where you want to be tomorrow. 
And I'm going to share my secrets with you, how I do it. I go work with you in two areas, as we'll do today, this morning. And the first area is called, can you read that? Shout it out. That's an M. Your mindset. What is your mindset? Yeah, it's like what's inside of here, right? What's inside of here? Your thoughts, your feelings, your emotions, your beliefs, or what I like to call your BS. By the way, that stands for your belief systems. That's all the intangibles. And then the second area we go to work in are the mechanics. And the mechanics are the actual tangibles, the skills, the tools, the technologies. And I'll be showing you or sharing with you three specific tools and technologies to help move you forward this morning, again, in the area of your time management. Now, <laughs> I wish I had a dime for every time I get asked this question. Amy, what skill do I need to go and develop that will help me the most with my career, my business, and my life? How many of you, show of hands, would say it's your time management? Yeah, you might think so, being that we're in this presentation this morning, right? I'm sorry, I did kind of set you up. I think that's why everybody else had their hand down. They knew it was coming. But thank you for raising your hand. If you did think, hand or no hand, that it's time management, you are half correct. And let me tell you why. There's actually nothing to manage about our time. Time management is a misnomer. Meaning, time is set. Time is finite. As a matter of fact, how many seconds during one day do we all have? Anybody know the number? Oh, you're going to find out in just a moment. But I need a volunteer. Oh, I know. I see Ed freaking out over here. I should know this. I should know this, right? Can I have a volunteer? Please come on up. Yes. What is your name? JJ. Okay, JJ. I just kissed the microphone. Come on up, JJ. <laughs> Let's go over here where there's a little bit more. I'll do tricks for food. So. Oh, good. <laughs> we must be related. Okay, JJ. Will you spell your last name for me? Souter, S A U T E R. Okay. So, JJ. Will you take a look at that for a couple seconds and then talk into the mic and let people know what it is I handed you? You handed me a check from Triune Consulting. By the way, that's my company. Dated today for $86,400 in my name and signed by you with some real looking account numbers at the bottom. Very good. Absolutely. 86,400. I'm not finished with you quite yet. And isn't that remarkable? She gave the check back. Wow. <laughs> so I have a question to ask you. If I gave you a check for $86,400 every day for the rest of your life, but I told you that you had to use this wisely, the money wisely, or you would lose it, what would you do? Wow. Um, a portion of it would definitely go to my kids' college fund, I have to say, because hopefully that would magnify in some fashion over time. And uh, maybe fix the car locks on my vehicle, because they're not working. Don't break in, please. Um, and every day, gosh, I don't know what I would do with that. Okay. As I invest in my children somewhere, somehow. Excellent. Good job. You can sit down. Thank you. Do I take that? <laughs> no. <laughs> but thanks for asking. I have had people take it and run. Um, here's my point. 
We all have 86,400 seconds a day. And the same proposition applies as the check. Use them wisely or forever lose them, right? Yeah. So let me ask you a question, my bright crowd, attractive as well. If it's not that we're managing the time, because the time is set, finite, 86,400 seconds per day, we each have while we're still on this planet, then what do you think it is that we're managing? Ooh, what you do in that time, what else? Bingo, ourselves. So it's what we think, feel, and react to the experiences out here that determine whether we stay here or we move forward. So that's the mindset. It's your thoughts, your feelings, your BS, your belief systems around the things that are happening out here that are either going to keep you here or move you forward. So, you ready for the good news, bad news game? It's a fun game to play. Let's start with the bad news. So the bad news, most of us would like to what? Blame external sources for our time management challenges and issues, right? We'd like to blame events that happen at our work site Everything from what? Phone interruptions, those really long emails, convoluted, you know, all those, all those uh, um, emails and what have you and great things. But we also would like to go and blame people. You know, those people who are calling us on the phone or who are writing those long, convoluted emails, or even your boss or manager who keeps assigning too much work. Oh, it's so much fun to blame him or her, isn't it? It's great, I and mean, plus you have a whole lot of cohorts who'll do it with you too, and it's always fun in numbers. Or we tend to blame circumstances. And at the work site or in our businesses, this has to do with shifting priorities. Or at your companies, jobs that aren't specifically defined and we find ourselves doing new things every day, right? But here's the reality of the situation. It is not the fault of those things happening out here. Instead, I'll say it again, it is how we think, feel, and react to what's happening out here that's going to drive our success in this area. And folks, that's the really good news, because the moment you accept that you are the cause of the problem, you understand that you're the solution to it as well. How great is that? Pretty darn good. All right, so we're going to roll up our sleeves, and we're going to get to work right now. And what I want you to do is an exercise, and I want you to do this with a partner. So I want you to, the first tables here will turn around to the second, and you guys will all work together. Third tables, you'll turn around to the one in back, and you'll work together and so on, right? So everybody, what I'd like you to do, grab a person, two or three, it doesn't matter, and I want you guys to share what's your point A, your current reality, looks like in the face of your time management. So go ahead, have some fun. Watch your language. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up, wrap it up. Very good, very good. So who wants to share what your point A looks like? What's your point A look like? Just shout it out. What's it look like? Is it all blue skies and chirping birds? No. So tell me what it is. Okay. 
What else? Excellent. So the lack thereof, streamlining processes, current reality, right? The lack thereof. What else? Go ahead. I'm sorry. You're very regimented, and that's helped you. Great. And so why are you here? <laughs> Your boss paid for you. Excellent. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. No, I'm glad you're here. What else? Anybody else having any trouble with their current reality around time? Well, let me introduce you to a gentleman who's got a little problem. Your typical, typical busy person. Busy, be, busy, busy, busy. How many of you feel like that ever? <laughs> yes, me too. Yeah, incredible. Okay. So if the whole idea is to move, from where you are today around your time management to where you want to be, the point B, what's that look like for you, the point B? Less anxiety. Less anxiety. Great. What else? Sleep. More, sleep. More sleep. Great. What else? More energy. What else? More creativity. More profit. More profit. How do you define profit? Making money. Making money. Oh, <laughs> making money a day. Nice. What else? How else do you define profit? Not have your company. Growth, expansion. See, here's the neat thing about being a coach. I get to ask these hard questions. And they kind of seem so obvious that everybody kind of gets confronted by them. But if we don't know what it is that we're aiming for, point B, what our goals are, then how much motivation and incentive do we have to move from here? Very little, right? This is the most important part of the diagram and the most time I spend with my clients because we don't think about what it is that we truly want. Did you go to school for that? I didn't. I went to school to learn the ABCs, arithmetic, science, some other things, but I never went to a school to help me identify what it is that I want, my goals, and then be shown a way to get them. Getting clear, folks, on this part is key to your success, not just with your time management, with your self-management, with your leadership. So what I'd like to do, oh, let me introduce my other friend. Who would you rather carpool with? Him or her? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting, when Katie and I talked, when she called me um, to ask me to present, you know, we talked about the profit track, and um, she said, you know, make sure they understand it doesn't have to be all about money, profit, right, or productivity, but it can actually be about less anxiety, more sleep, and all of that, all right, just equally as well, I just want to point that out. So, in order to be more productive, well, 
in the area of time management, it's going to require that we have a thoughtful approach to time. A thoughtful approach to time. So what's the juxtaposition? When we're in the current reality of, I just don't have enough time. How do we slow down, get focused, get centered in a thoughtful way to approach our time? It takes one, the mindset, and it takes two, the skills or the mechanics. How many of you are entrepreneurs in this room? Yeah, would you self-describe as fly by the seat of your pants? When's the last time you sat down and had a thoughtful planning session? Yeah. Most of us entrepreneurs were quick. We're really good flying by the seat of our pants. We don't like to slow down so much. Planning, what's that? Right? But it takes a thoughtful approach and planning with your time. And planning as easy as scheduling things in your calendars. So here we go. I'm going to introduce you to three skills to develop this morning. First one is schedule backwards. Two is to be honest about deadlines. And three, review task methodology. And I pick these three for a reason, based upon the, the audience here today. Whether you're an employee, a business owner, or whomever you are, a busy person in your life, you can use these three immediately. So the first one we're going to talk about, schedule backwards. It actually happens to be one of my favorite. Now, when we have tasks, which are straightforward, they're pretty linear. Like, we can check them off and do each one in order. But I want you to think about something that you're working on, either this weekend, could be at home, or next week when you get back to the office. It's more project-oriented. Because the schedule backwards really helps when you have a project. So I'm using an example up here of when I do my e-newsletter. And let me tell you what goes into doing my newsletter. A lot of you probably have the same, but it's basically four steps, right? Seems pretty straightforward. I decide the content for the week, what I'm going to write about, the subject material, then I actually go write it, then I design it, because it's in an e-newsletter format, and then I go and distribute it. This is what happens. We spend an unequal amount of time on number one and number two. So that when it comes to number three, we have very little time in order to meet number four, the deadline, or yeah, the deadline with the distribution. So again, go apply that to a project that you're working on currently. And I just want you to share, go turn around for two, two minutes, go turn around back to your neighbors and tell them about the project you're working on and how you're going to begin to apply. Oh, I didn't give you the solution. I left you with the problem. This is what you're going to do. You're going to start with the deadline. You're going to estimate the time of each stage. Then you're going to make sure that the total job fits into the total time available allow sufficient time for contingencies. Those are those unplanned possibilities that come up. And the last, look at the project in isolation and ask, how does it fit in with or affect my other current projects and responsibilities? So in effect, what I'm asking you to do on the fourth bullet is to isolate the trees as well as the forest. So to see the big picture, but what you're currently working on, to align it within that big picture. That's key. And most of us skip right over that. And we actually create more work than necessary as we do that. So anyway, for you to grasp this, go ahead, turn around. Talk to your neighbors just for a couple minutes and discuss maybe a project 
that you're working on currently. Again, it could be something at home this weekend, but apply these bullets to them. Okay. All right. So what'd you discover? Did anybody have a really good juicy example? Something that they're working on? Did anyone have an aha uh -huh moment? Anybody want to share something that they're working on that's kind of big and where this might apply? I have just a general example. Um, Do you mind talking into this? No, I don't mind. I used to work for an agency, a graphic design agency, and we charge by the hour, which is very common. So I had to do it in a certain amount of time. But now I'm working in-house, and I can spend more time on projects, so I do. And the longer I work there, it seems like the more time I spend on things, because you know, being a perfectionist and wanting it to look great, um, and they don't charge by the hour. I mean, so uh, I find that I'm losing time because of that. Did any of these bullets help you with whatever it is that you're working on, either overall or specifically? I just the number three. I mean, just make sure that. Um, to kind of map out the time you do have available and make sure that you're only spending that time and not keeping, you know, going back to it and going back to it when, when you should be starting on something else. So. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll be right there. <laughs> Would you talk into this so we can hear? I know she was saying that sometimes she finds herself working on projects and you um, seem to be spending too much time, you might could start with number one, too, is like setting yourself with a deadline for that particular work. That way then you can work backwards from there. So you won't find like I'm spending too much time. You might say Monday, at the end of Monday, I'm gonna be finished with this. So then you can work back and estimate the time it'll take for each stage to complete that. And you might find yourself, you know, being a little bit more productive. Excellent, thank you. Anybody else? Revelation? Yes, ma'am. I think our group over here just all talked about uh, we don't have deadlines. It's kind of ASAP. So just starting with the end in mind actually does give an end to the project. So it, kind of putting a deadline on things without just saying now yeah. would help a lot. That's a really good segue into the next one that I want to introduce you to. Deadlines and also working collectively. Before I go on though, I just want to, I can't drive this bullet home enough with my clients and in my own life. So when I'm writing a newsletter, I mean it takes a tremendous amount of time and energy to write something like a, a newsletter. Um, I finally got smarter about it, meaning when I have a rollout of a teleclass or webinar that I'm offering, I now put my newsletter or newsletters, if they're various parts, to the same subject material. I proceed them prior to the launch of the rollout. How smart is that? Now that might seem kind of obvious, but in reality, point A, we often don't work with that forethought, right? With that thoughtful planning approach. So I'm actually now working smarter than harder in that I am getting all my newsletters, or excuse me, getting all my audiences um, really psyched uh, about a month prior to the rollout of the offering because of what I'm writing to them, again, about three or four weeks out prior to. So that fourth bullet is wonderful. Okay, very quickly. Managing deadlines. <sighs> the darndest thing about deadlines. We're not honest about them. And especially when we're working with a group of people at the work site on a deadline. How do we get honest with deadlines, especially when we're working with a group, so that ASAP doesn't, right, make us pull our hair out? Yes, ma'am.
Excellent. What is this woman doing? It's so obvious. She's being honest, but what else is she doing? It's so obvious. <laughs> She's a skillful liar. No. What is she doing? She's just doing it right now, what she was doing with us. She's communicating. She's communicating. When you communicate with your team members, wow. I mean, it's so simple, so honest, so right in front of our face, but we rarely do it. When we work as entrepreneurs and business owners in our own solo uh, shops, it's the same thing. We have to communicate with ourselves and with other parties involved. So communication is key when it comes to deadlines. The third and the final task methodology. I love this stuff. Task methodology. So there are four bullets here that I recommend that you do. I love to systematize, or systemize, or whatever it is that you want to call it. Systems, 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 and more systems. Did I mention I like systems? And they're out there galore, right? Second, changing actual methods. Batching versus onesies. Do you know what I mean by that? Batching versus onesies. So I'm going to give you a real simple, simple example. Batching. Those things that are related to the project or the task, do them all at the same time. Simple as schedule all your doctor appointments in one day, right? So when you leave the house, you know you've got three or four appointments, and when you come back to the house, they're over. Versus the onesies that we do, right? Big time robbers. Third bullet, working with somebody else. Try switching tasks because that's going to show you a new way to do something, probably a better improved way. Relinquish some of the control. Two heads better than one. And finally, oh, I have two more. Finally, lower your standards. I heard it earlier, we were talking about perfectionism. When we aim to be perfect at things, huge time robber. I'm actually telling you to lower your standards, Ed. I'm telling your employees to lower their standards. It's like I've got to talk to you, Amy, at the end of this. Oh, does he tell you that every day? Pays you for it? Right, good, good. Woohoo! And the final, and this is what keeps our economy running subcontract, right? Delegate, delegate to external consultants. Fantastic. You are a great crowd. Did I go over, Cynthia? No, okay, good. Do I have a moment left? Do I have any moments left? I have eight minutes. Okay, somebody raised a sign back there about four minutes ago that said five. I thought I was at the Olympics for a moment because I thought it was Cynthia that was doing it. So I was like, I wonder if she's grading me right now during my presentation. Okay, so we have a few moments I'm gathering. Questions? We have a couple minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, ma'am. We were talking about um, the planning for contingencies, leaving time for that. And we were talking about unknown unknowns. And how do you plan for that? How do you leave that much time for an unknown unknown? Are you a parent? <laughs> anybody a parent in this room? Shout it out. How do you prepare for the unknown? Yeah. Patience, prioritize. So if you think mindset and mechanics, I've got to assume a, a, a mindset, right? Where I'm more patient, where I'm more mentally flexible. And then the mechanics, the skill set to go develop, bingo, prioritize. Yes, managing 
Yes, managing time, managing family. That's a great question. If we had more time, I'd take you through prioritizing because that's key to your time management and most of us don't know how to do it. So here's a shameless plug. Go visit my website, amylrobinson.com because I do have an upcoming teleclass and a lot of it has to do with how to prioritize. Okay, any other questions and time remaining? You were so good. Thank you. Give yourselves a